morning, everybody. Can you guys hear me? We're good. Yeah, you can start the timer. Masala told me that I'm on the clock this morning. They can start the timer. Well, as Rob said, uh, my name is Gregory Kassam. I'm from uh, Durban. And I really thank God that we could make it here this morning because uh, applying for a visa to get to Peter Maritzburg was quite a difficult task. It's like uh, PMB is a different country on its own, but I'm super excited uh, to be here, excited uh, for what Jesus is doing. And when I first uh, came down the road, when I saw that this church is a cathedral, I thought to myself, I'm in trouble because I'm wearing a light blue pants and sneakers. And when I went up to pray, I'm like, hey, yeah, the elders, guys dressed like corporate gear, jersey shirts. Uh, but thank you for making me feel uh, welcome this morning. Come, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Is everybody doing okay this morning? Yep. Are you all Liverpool supporters here? <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, super excited to be here this morning. Uh, I brought two members uh, from my church, could have brought more, but uh, as I said, uh, it was hard to get the visas to get here. So I got Amos here, just wave to the people, Amos. I got Amos, just welcome him. Uh, Amos uh, just gave his heart to the Lord. Uh, late last uh, year, and we just baptized him a few months ago, so we're excited about what God has done uh, and is still doing in the life of Amos. And we've got Sanchi uh, here as well, also brought her with us this morning. Uh, so I actually asked her to speak to us for two or three minutes because I just uh, believe that her story will really encourage us before going to the preaching of the word. So I've just asked that you just come and share her story real quick. I'm sure it will encourage somebody, and then we will go into the preaching of the word. Thank you. In the car, G told me I have three or two minutes, so I'm going to try and make it for two minutes. <laughs> um, so I was, pre I was born a Muslim, and uh, in 2018, I gave myself to the Lord. But how that happened was my cousin used to come home, and she used to rant and rave about how good Jesus is, how cool church is, like all the, the cool stuff, the cool experiences, and all the feelings. And I was like, OK, FOMO. I need to have some of this. So she invited me to a church event. And I think I fell in love instantly. And then um, three months later, I went back to church. I went for another conference. And then I started questioning, OK, what do I want to do? And um, I started doing church in an Islamic way. I wanted to do everything that the church was doing in a Muslim way. And um, that obviously did not work out. <laughs> and then 2018, I converted and I gave myself to the Lord. And I thought that it would be a nice uh, thing to tell my parents. But when I told my mom, she started crying and told me I was going to die. And then. <laughs> And then um, my dad obviously was not too happy. Uh, but then later on, uh, my mom actually said that, you know what, actually this is a good decision. You're your own self. This is where you should be, da 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 da, da. And, um, But my dad, however, is still on the water. He, but last, I think about a few months ago, he introduced me as a Christian, so that I see is like a sign. He's actually accepting it, so thank God. Um, yeah, and my journey with Christ has been amazing. As much as there's been challenges with obviously your parents, and those are your closest people to you, but hey, many good things that come with it. And um, yeah, I started my own brand with one of the ladies at church. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's for Christ. Um, I'm now doing a, a course with G, a theology course, and I'm like, wow, in three, how many years has it been? <laughs> three, four, five years being Christian, and that my life has changed immensely. Amen. And all glory to God, and I'm so thankful for my cousin who introduced me to God, and I'm so thankful for my church who has helped me in my journey with God. Amen. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. I just wanted to share that story uh, just to encourage us, is it better? Uh, just to encourage us that Jesus is for everybody, amen? amen. 
you know, sometimes we, we, we decide who we want to reach out to, and we sometimes have these preconceived ideas of who will accept Jesus or not, uh, but we are thankful to God that Jesus is for everybody. Muslims are not out of bound. Hindus are not out of bound. It doesn't matter what background uh, people come from. Jesus is for everybody. So we just want to thank God for he is still in the business of saving people and in the business of saving Muslims and everybody else this morning. So yeah, turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 1. Uh, we're going to be reading from verses 1 to verses 12 real quick. Uh, I'm not going to be too long this morning. Uh, I want to talk about stronger together and talk about the power of gospel partnership this morning. And uh, yeah, once again, I just want to thank... Uh, you guys for just uh, your warm reception this morning, and I know my brother Masala is preaching out uh, in Westville, and uh, I've just got to know Masala in about uh, the last two years, and he really quickly became a sort of like a big brother to me, and uh, we went for a, a leadership course, I think it was in Johannesburg uh, last year, and we got to share a room together, and nobody warned Masala that I am the king of snoring. <laughs> So I snored two years shame out of that man's life. So when I woke up the next morning, you could see his face was wrinkled. I'm like, what happened, Masala? He's like, hey, bro, I've been up from 2.30. I thought you were dying. <laughs> so I was cutting wood big time there. Uh, so yeah, Masala is one of those guys that I can just call and phone and say, hey, Masala, I'm not happy about these things and help me with this. What do you think about that? So he's really become like a big bro to me. I really appreciate him and love him for all that he is doing in my life. So I thank God for that partnership as well. And my sister, Makosi, as well. Amen. Such beautiful people. Come, let's clap hands for our leaders this morning. Yeah. We're going to do a lot. We're going to be doing a lot of clapping and repeating stuff this morning. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1, from verses 1 to verses 12. Let's read. To all the saints in Christ Jesus, who are at Philippi, with the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, but in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless from the day of Christ, filled with the fruits of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. I pray that your word, uh, Lord God, will just bring some illumination, that it will encourage somebody, uh, that it will bless uh, somebody this morning, Father. I pray that those that have come in, Lord God, discourage, Lord God, I pray that they will live encouraged. And Lord God, even as we pray this morning, Father, we pray for joy, for your word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, some might just be serving you out of duty this morning, but I pray, Lord God, that you will restore to them the joy of their salvation, Lord God. And yeah, this is my prayer this morning, that you, Lord God, will fill us with joy. We need joy in these dark times, Lord. Even as we read the news, Lord God, and, and scroll through our phones, Lord God, we are constantly being bombarded with bad news. But we want to thank you this morning for the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah, we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So as you heard in the videos this morning, it's actually at one Sunday, so preachers are preaching in different uh, parts of uh, KZN, and I'm not too sure how I got here. I thought maybe my solo thoughts, I'm the safest option. Oh, I'm a risk. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, so super excited uh, to be here this morning and just to share about gospel uh, partnership with you guys this morning. And yeah, super excited to be here. So there's just four things that I want to talk about uh, in terms of God, uh, gospel partnership. And I just want to say, obviously, that we are stronger together. 
Amen. So it's such a beautiful thing because I come from a background uh, of church where we actually don't do partnership well. I come from a background of churches where we don't come together and pray, where we don't partner together, where we don't speak the same language. Uh, so when I came into that once family, it was such a beautiful thing to be surrounded by brothers and sisters and family who actually care for you, uh, who actually come to your aid where you need their help. So it's such a beautiful thing uh, for brothers and sisters to partner together. And it's also beautiful for me to meet a new family. So you are my family. Uh, you are my brothers and sisters. So when I see you, when I come next time to Peter Marisburg, and you say, hey, brother, how are you? doing? Hey, sister, how are you doing? So whether you like it or not, you are related to me, and I am related to you through Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So just get over it, and it's only Jesus that makes these things possible. It is only Jesus that can cause a young colored man uh, to be a brother to an elderly white gentleman. It's only the gospel that does that, you know, and as a church, I think we can actually even do a better job of displaying that, you know, and uh, I'm married, uh, I'm married to a beautiful uh, Indian woman, and uh, before you think uh, I eat curries a lot at home, I don't, uh, we eat a lot of English food, so I think my wife is British on the inside, but she's in an Indian body. Uh, because a lot of people think, ah, you're eating all of the curries, you know, the way people stereotype uh, and, and we don't. I think we're having roast chicken and uh, some whatever else uh, for, for lunch this afternoon. So, yeah. And that's also another beautiful picture of the gospel. You know how God brings people from different backgrounds together. So, it's such a beautiful thing this morning. So, we are glad as a church to be in partnership uh, with churches who share same interests and same goals. Uh, so, this morning, let's just look at four things that we share in common. And the first thing is we have a shared relationship. We have a shared relationship. Now the New Testament is full of language of rich relationships because both because of both the people and the churches and it is evident from the scriptures that Paul and Timothy knew these believers in Philippi. They didn't just know the leadership of the church, rather when they wrote to the church they wrote to all of the saints uh, in Philippi. Right? And in writing, they wrote with words that were filled with deep emotions and feelings for all of those believers. And once again, uh, coming over to that once family, there's also a cultural shift as well. Uh, because the churches that I grew up in, in order to get to speak to the leader of the church, there were three or four different levels uh, that, you, that you had to go through. Like the pastor was like the Zen master. You know, even to, even to get his contact number was a big thing. What do you want his number for? You need to speak to this person, that person, or that person first. Uh, but I'm sure, yeah, uh, there is open door policy here. Yeah, I'm assuming, let me just not assume. Maybe there are levels there as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, from, but from what I see, man, uh, the, the, the partners, we, we are just able to just pick up the phone and phone each other. And, and you're able to just come to a lead and say, hey, can you pray for me? Uh, this is uh, what I'm going through. So we have shared relationships uh, with each other. We read in the Bible here yeah, uh, when he's writing, when Paul is writing, he says stuff like, I hold you in my heart. And he says, as God is my witness, I will yearn for you with all the affection of Christ Jesus. And on reading the New Testament, there's no room for cold corporate ways of interacting. We have to be intentional about living in community with one another. We do life together and not just church on a Sunday morning. So as a church, we have to do life together. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 4 that the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, the fellowships, the breaking of bread, and to prayers. They were together as often as possible, doing life, having fellowship, meeting beyond church on a Sunday, meeting beyond prayer meetings in the week, they were doing life together. So I just want to encourage us this morning, if you're just a person who just comes into church, clocks your card and goes out and say, yippee, I went to church on a Sunday morning, I want to let you know that Jesus has created you for more. Amen. I want to let you know this morning that you were created for community. God has created for each and every one of us to have fellowship with one another. This is what God has called us to do. And the Bible says, by this the world will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Somebody said that we can impress people from a distance, but we can only impact them when they come up close. So if we want to make an impact for Jesus, we must invite people into our lives. 
And I think sometimes we, we get it wrong. We, we invite people to church more than we invite people into our lives. When Jesus was walking by, two of the disciples said, where are you staying, Rabbi? And you know what Jesus' response was? Come and see. He never preached a sermon to the first disciples that asked him where he's living. He said, come and see. It was an invitation to his life. Come and see where I live. Come and see how I live. And this is the, and this is the stuff that we also need to adopt in our minds. When people are going through hardships, don't be in a rush and say, you need to come to church. Be there for them. We don't want people to have a sense of, hey, we just want them to join our church. Let us show interest in them because we are all made in the image and in the likeness of God. Amen? So in shared relationships, there are great benefits which include provocation, yeah, to greater faith in God and to obedience in Jesus Christ. We provoke each other when we're in partnership with one another. When you're in isolation, no one is provoking you. And I always tell the guys in my church, if you mark your own homework, you're going to give yourself top marks. I am the best Christian. I go to church. I pay tithes. I go to the prayer meeting. But God is calling us for more. And when we're in partnership, we provoke each other. I provoke the guys. I'm like, hey, guys, we need to do more. And when we live together in faith and in partnership with one another, we can provoke each other to do good works. We can say, brother, sister, come on. I haven't seen you in church. Come out of your slumber. Even as Masala was saying, one of the prayer points is that everyone needs to come out of lockdown mode. The world has come out of lockdown mode. The world is going about doing their thing. We were in the UK two, three weeks ago. No masks. We could see people's lips and teeth. They are going about their lives and they are doing their things. They are pursuing their goals. And sometimes it seems that everybody is moving forward with their lives except the church. We still want to play it safe and all of these 20 things. And I'm not saying you mustn't be safe. You must be. But uh, our safety is not God's priority. <laughs> because Jesus sent the disciples into dangerous places. Now, I'm not, saying walk into danger, I'm not saying walk into danger. I'm just trying to provoke us this morning to shake that slumber off and just say, hey, it's time to do what God has called us to do. Shared relationships. Another benefit is protection. The importance of knowing that your leaders are accountable. Accountability in many churches is like a swear word. We look at accountability as a negative thing, but accountability is a positive thing. It's a beautiful thing to know that as leaders, we are accountable to each other. We're not doing our own thing. We're not just running amok. I'm not just like a young thundercat just running around doing whatever I want to do. No, there's accountability on a level, corporate level uh, in the church, and there's individual accountability. God has not called us to live on islands alone and to make our own decisions and just to go about life doing it our own way, like Frank Sinatra. No, sir. God has not called us to live that way. God has called us to be accountable to each other. If you miss church for six weeks, for example, you shouldn't feel some kind of a way if someone just phones and says, hey, we missed you. Can we pray for you? Where have you been? That's not an opportunity to say, the church is in my business now. No, they love you. So accountability must be a positive thing. We must see it as a positive thing rather than a negative thing. Because most of us, we come from families where they don't care. They don't phone you often. They don't care what's going on in your life. And most of the time, we only see our family members at funerals. Because people are going about their lives. We're studying, we want to get married, we want to have children, you know, we want to get all the degrees and all of these 20 things. And our families don't care about us. And that is why it's hard to relate in church when we are called to accountability. Jesus is calling us to accountability this morning. It's a beautiful thing where you voluntarily say, hey, you know what, I want to be an accountable person. Hey, Masala, what do you think about this one? To enter into a relationship with this person, but they're not a Christian, what do you think about it? 
That's a beautiful thing. What we do, especially our young people, uh, I'm dating this person, what do you think? You've already made a decision, don't waste my time and come and ask me for my opinion. That's what I say to the, uh, most of the time to the guys. So accountability is a beautiful thing. And another benefit is prayer. Like this morning, we could pray for each other. It's not a beautiful thing when people from other churches can pray into our church. Such a beautiful thing where we can share our pulpits with each other. Because sometimes, you know, we need a bit of fresh air in our pulpits. You know what I'm saying? As much as I think I might be able to preach okay, I'm sure my people get tired of me. I don't know if you get tired of masala preaching every week. I don't know the frequency of the preaching here, but sometimes it's good to have a breath of fresh air uh, in church. So yeah, so we pray for each other. And here's the application this morning. Don't do life in isolation. As an individual or as a church. And relationships require an investment of time. And this second word is very important. Intentionality. We have to be intentional. Desiring something and actually doing something are two different things. Oh, I desire to be more involved in the family of God. It's a great desire, but until you sign up and say, I want to actually be a volunteer, can I come next week? Then it stays as desire. A lot of people in churches have desires. Oh, I desire for God to use me. A desire for God to take me to the four corners of the world. And the Lord is saying, start with ushering in your local church. Hmm? We've got a lot of people who want to do things in the four corners of the world. And God is saying, are you faithful to your local church? Start there. Volunteer there. Go and make coffee there. Because a lot of us seeing, see being used by God as just flying all over the world and preaching to thousands of people. And God is saying, start. Start in your local church. Be faithful in your local church. Just be faithful in your church attendance. You want God to use you? Just be faithful in church. God is not asking you to do great and mighty things. Just be faithful. And your faithfulness and your attendance will make a great difference. Because sometimes people are not just coming to church because of Jesus. They're coming to church to see you sometimes. And that might not be the wrong motive, but at least they're still coming to church. When Lazarus rose from the dead, the Bible says that they came to see him also and not only Jesus. So sometimes by your faithfulness, you can encourage others to come on in. And by our lack of faithfulness, we also speak to people and say, oh, it's okay. You don't need to go often or consistently. You can go as often as you want to. When you feel like going, you can go. I've got seven more minutes. I really thought it would take 20 minutes, so it sounds fine. Uh, point number two is a shared care and prayer. Paul and Timothy carried this church in their hearts and they were committed to praying for them. And their hearts were filled with joy every time they remembered the church. The church had a very special place in the hearts of Paul since it was his first church that he planted. Church, let me say this this morning. When we pray... God acts. We serve a living God. The Bible tells us that his arm is not too short, his ear is not too heavy. God acts and God answers prayer. And so even though they would have loved to have the Apostle Paul amongst them more, having him pray was of vital importance to this church and to the health of the church. So prayer is very important as well. Moses and Joshua learned this lesson of prayer. In the day of battle, Moses was of more use on top of the mountain, lifting up his hands in prayer than he would have been in the battlefield holding a weapon. His prayers moved the muscle of God's power. When they stood and they did battle, as long as Moses' hands were up, lifted up in prayer, the victory was won and the young guns were down in the field fighting the battle. I love the movie Troy, and one of the kings say that war is old men talking and young men dying. Avoid the politics. We must pray, church. God has called us to pray. God has called us to share our care and to pray for one another. 
Say amen this morning. Point number three. We have a shared hope and a shared faith. Partnership, partnership really serves to renew or fortify shared hope and faith. There are times when churches or leaders can feel overwhelmed by their circumstances. But what a joy it is to strengthen one another in such times where we can pray for each other. What a joy. There are so many leaders who are leading in isolation. And they don't know of anybody to call because they haven't adopted this culture of partnership. And I was watching TV one day and this preacher was saying the, there was a situation where he was in dire straits and he was driving down the road, he was driving to nowhere and he stopped at the red robots and he started crying because he was scrolling through his phone and he was asking himself, who can I call in the situation that I'm in? And there was no one who he could call. Because all of his life he lived and he did ministry in isolation. And this morning God is calling us to live together in partnership and not to live in isolation. Isolation is never good. It was never God's plan for us to do this thing called life alone. God has called us to do it in community and God has called us to do it together. Are you with me this morning? Shared hope and a shared faith. On that note, I wanna encourage you. When your leaders are doing good, don't keep it to yourself. Send a text message, hey, I really love that message. Thank you for sending that prayer. I was encouraged by the word that you preached. Encourage your leaders. We need encouragement. And when they don't do good, don't say nothing. Just, just keep it moving. <laughs> they never preach well. Don't, don't, don't go tell them. Just keep quiet. <laughs> don't say nothing about it. All right? And point number four. Three minutes. Oh, top pressure when you see the clock there on the top, yeah? Learning experience for you anyway. Point number four, we have a shared message. It's the last point I'm going to make this morning. A shared message. Paul says, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. We have so much of the New Testament because local churches in the early church period needed clarification or encouragement to stay true to the gospel. And churches don't just need to be planted, but we also need to be strengthened in many ways, especially when it comes to our doctrine, because unfortunately we're living in a climate where there are a lot of false teachings out there. And that is why Paul encourages Timothy, watch your life and watch your doctrine. It's important that we are aware of who and what we are listening to. We have a shared message, one gospel, and it's the authentic gospel. Paul told the Philippians that they were partners and partakers in the gospel together, defending and confirming it. As churches, we can help one another to be both faithful and relevant in the midst of of an increasing hostile culture. And last but not least, we share goals. We share goals. You know, as churches, a lot of the time we want to start every new year with a new theme and we're looking for what is the thing for this year. But Jesus has already done it for us this morning. Our mission has been defined by Jesus. We are to love God with everything on the inside of us. And we are to love people. And then we are also called to live for God's glory. We are to love one another as we have been loved by God. We are to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus commanded. So as churches in partnership, we also have shared goals. We all exist to plant and strengthen churches for God's glory and for the advancement of the gospel. I want to just close with these words this morning that gospel partnership in the church is biblical. And it should be something that we as a church, as individuals, should desire. And I want to close with that. But I just feel impressed on my heart. Can I 
Can I just pray for the young people of this church, if that's okay? Young people, we have been bombarded by a lot of things. A lot of things are bombarding us. A lot of things are taking our attention and time away from God. We are under so much pressure, so much peer pressure. Social media is slowly killing a lot of us. You want to know why there's no fire in your heart for the Lord? Because all of your attention has been sucked away from the world. And many times we try to aspire to what we see on Instagram and what we see on social media. A lot of people today, they're going into careers, they want to be IG models, whatever the case may be. But this morning, I just want to pray for you, young people. Here's a community that you can take for Jesus. Here's a community that is crying out for answers and you have the answers. And this morning I want to pray for you that God really puts a fire in your heart. And that whatever you are going through in your life, I pray that the fire of God will burn it away. And that even as you faithfully commit your life to God and commit your heart to serving Him, I pray that God will use you for His glory. There are a lot of empty seats in the church this morning. And we pray that these seats will be filled with young people. Filled with young people. And I want to encourage the older people as well. Encourage the youngsters. You see what's happening in America? Within the space of one month, two mass shootings took place. And you know who did the killing? Teenagers. 18-year-olds. Going on murder sprees. And teenagers might not be going into shopping malls today and killing people, but they might be into other stuff that is causing them to become distant from God. So this morning, I just want to offer up a prayer for the grace generation, youth, and young adults, and for this community of young people. We need you to rise up. Everyone is coming out of the closet. It's time for you to step out and say, I'm a Christian. You might have been quiet, saved quietly, but you don't have to be quiet about it. Tell somebody about what God has done in your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the power of partnership. Lord, even as I'm burdened this morning for the young people of this church and this community and, and throughout KZN, Lord, can you do something special? Lord, can you touch our young people? Lord, this morning we cry out, Lord God, for a revival amongst our young adults and teens. We pray, Lord God, that they will not waste their lives and waste their time on social media, Lord God, spending hours upon hours, Lord God, scrolling themselves to death, Lord God. I pray that they will have an appetite for the things of the world, that they will have an appetite to pray, that they will have an appetite for reading the scriptures, that they will have an appetite to serve in the house of God. Lord, I pray that you will remove every worldly desire on the inside of them. And even as they come week after week, I pray, Lord God, that this word will penetrate. And not just, Lord God, linger on the surface level. I pray that it will penetrate right through to the heart. And that we will see change. And that these young people, Lord God, will be running the streets, preaching the gospel. Not sitting on street corners, Lord, Father God, wasting time, but they will be on street corners sharing the message of Jesus. Lord, we know of so many teenagers on drugs in this day and age. So many, Lord God, caught up in so many things this morning. But we pray and we thank you that you are a faithful God. You are able to do exceeding and abundantly this morning. So, Lord God, I thank you for these young people, Lord God. Even in this year, 2022, Father, one by one, I thank you that we are going to see a change and a turning around, Lord God. Those, Lord God, who have just been sitting quietly, that you have gifted, I thank you that there will be a rising up, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that they will be discontent with the current states of things and that they will rise up and say, Lord, I need more of you. More of Jesus. I pray that they will become the light and the salt here in Peter Maritzburg. I pray that they will become unrecognizable even to their own parents. That one day the parents will wake up and say, Who is this child? 
I've never heard this child pray before. In the middle of the night, this child is praying, Who is this? This is my prayer this morning, Father. Send revival. Revive our young people. Revive every young man, every young woman. Revive them, Father. Let them chase after you. I pray that they will become God chasers. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Amen. Thanks, Greg. The Lord has used you to provoke us. Thank you. Yeah, let's, let's just pray. And um, Lord, yeah, we just really want to thank you for your word to us today, Lord. Lord, help us to live together as a community. Many of us say we're so busy. We don't have time. We can make it on Sunday, but that's all we have time for. And the Lord's challenging us on that. And it's in community that we learn to help one another in our busyness. It's in community that we learn to help one another not to waste time on things that are making us busy that shouldn't be. It's in community that we can support one another and pray for one another. Let's just be silent before the Lord and let him just speak to us for a moment. Just ask him what he wants you to change in your life at the moment. Yeah, Lord, whatever you're saying to each one as individuals, we want to hear and obey and walk in obedience to you. Thank you that you've put us in a family, in a community, and for all the benefits there are to being part of a community. Lord, I pray that as we, we go from here, Lord, not one of us will think we're leaving this community behind, but that we would walk in our minds and in our hearts as part of this community that you've put us in. And help us, Lord, to be effective in reaching the lost for you and for your kingdom. I just pray this in Jesus' name. I pray your blessing upon Greg and his family. I pray your blessing upon Hope Church. Pray that you would use them mightily, Lord God, for your purposes in that community. Just thank you, Lord. Pray your blessing on their homes and on their families in Jesus' name. Amen. And if anyone would like prayer for anything specific, please feel free to come forward. We will be happy to pray with you. And then also uh, just a, remember, a reminder of the training that's taking place now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.